Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and I am super excited to be joined by podcast contributor Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Becky. How Uh, are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Very excited to chat about this book. I know, and I'm super (laughs) excited because on this quick shot of romance, we are reviewing Irresistibly Yours by Lauren Lane. This is book one in the Oxford series, which is a spinoff from her Sex, Love, and Stiletto series. And they were published originally with the Love Swept romance line uh, through Penguin Random House. And you actually were like, why don't we talk more about this author? Why don't we talk more about these books? Yeah, and it's really funny because like Lauren Lane, a lot of her books are traditionally published. And I am like almost exclusively an indie, indie author reader. But Lauren Lane is like one of my all-time favorites. She's one of my comfort reads. She's like a Sawyer Bennett type author for me, where like when I just need like a palate cleanser, a really good book, I always wind up going to her books. So this was actually a reread for me. (laughs) Um, Me me also. But I think that, so there's something I've noticed is that a lot of these authors that came out of this Love Swept. So in 2019, Love Swept was dissolved um penguin random house stopped the line it used to be their category answer to compete against harlequin category um and love swept was only digital copies of books they never they went to a digital only format i think in 2016 and so a lot of these books now what oh this is 15 so it might be 2014 they went to a digital only um concept for their line of books. They no longer produce paperbacks. And Love Swept has given us some amazing authors. Sawyer Bennett got her start as a Love Swept author. Kelly Jameson, Love Swept author. Um, So a lot of our favorites came right out of Love Swept. But somehow we never talked about Lauren Lane. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. I think because when Love Swept dissolved, she did have a Montlake contract. She has some Montlake, some books with Montlake. So she has some books in Kindle Unlimited. But then um, then she kind of went with um, Pocket Books. Or maybe she went over to Berkeley. I can't remember where she ended up. But when she ended up over there, they really started to take... Her later releases have taken on the trad pub sheen. I haven't read much of her later stuff. I've read her much older stuff, like her Oxford, her Stiletto. I love, love, love her um, Wall Street series. Yeah, those are Montlake. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so it's just interesting because, uh, like, her newer stuff, she has a Park Avenue series that's, like, Runaway Brides or um, Jilted Brides series, and then she has one that's called... Uh, made for Manhattan and those are all traditionally published and they're just a little slower burn um, a little less chemistry right this book lots of chemistry there's lots of chemistry in the book so let's get to this review of irresistibly yours Uh, we will link the synopsis of the book in our on the shelf show notes at buzzingaboutromance.com The release date for this book was October 6th of 2015. Tropes, instant attraction, co-workers. This also qualifies for one of our after sports uh, categories because they are both sports journalists. Um, So it's like baseball adjacent. It's baseball adjacent, which did not make <laughs> Lindsay sad. Uh, reformed playboy, real bodied heroine, um, because our heroine, Penelope Pope, is described as being boyish in figure, short, flat chested, um, and without hips. And it was really. So one of the things that we try to do when we categorize body type, we want to draw attention to the authors that are writing on the spectrum, not just our plus size heroines, but also our, you know, heroines that aren't necessarily as curvy. Yeah. One of Penelope's big complaints is not having boobs. She talks a lot about her not having boobs. doesn't She's really not happy about that. (laughs) I can't blame her though. I thought that was really realistic because like, if you're unhappy with something as big of a life as your boobs are, like, 
you'd be a little bit obsessed. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think her, her like vocal being vocal about it's fine. You can look at me, but there's no boobs there. Where was just I think really realistic, and a lot of girls that are friends of mine that don't have boobs are like that. They make jokes about the fact that they don't have boobs, just like I have boobs that are big, and I make jokes about having big boobs. So, yeah. I think it's just natural to joke about boobs or talk about them. It was. And that was just a really awkward description of my boobs. And I'm trying really hard to keep myself. Anyway. Okay. This is the best discussion we've had. Um, So very literary uh, Um, review. (laughs) This is the Oxford series of books. Um, This they're standalones. They're interconnected standalones put out percentage was 53%. Um, and there is a third act breakup. And boy, was it a devastating third act breakup. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about our hero first, Mr. Cole Sharp. Journalist, but he is so much more than just a sports journalist, isn't he? He is. So he's been a freelance journalist. And he is... So one of the big components of the book, Cole and Penelope, are both competing for the same editor position. Um they so he is a freelance journalist wanting to do f- sports full time as this editor to advance his career. He, outside of work, pretty much just dedicates all of his free time to his brother Bobby. His brother Bobby is in like an adult home for Bobby had Down what... syndrome. He was okay. Down syndrome. I should have written that down. That's okay. <laughs> um, and Cole's parents had passed away in a car accident, and he was Bobby's sole caregiver. But he quickly realized that he was having Bobby live with him, but he quickly realized that his brother wasn't happy in that situation. So he found him a group home living situation. And with that comes a bill, you yeah, know, the so cost. That's why he's trying to get this uh, editor job. And then the other thing is like his past, re- his relationship history is interesting. He's not always been a playboy. And you see, like, he's very much a caregiver to Bobby in a lot of ways. And it's not that he's necessarily opposed to relationships, but that he thinks that no one is, no partner would be willing to take on the burden of that relationship he has with his brother because he's been burned by um, the only other serious relationship he's had in the past. And he's a little bit bitter about that. He, he is and Bobby's a big part of his life but he tries very hard like his friends at the magazine his co-workers his buddies the guys he goes and have beer with they do not even know about Bobby like he keeps yeah. him very separate from his life is very compartmentalized yeah and I will say that's a common theme across these Oxford men like you want to kind of hit them in the head as you go through because Cole is not the only one. Cole is the first one, but he is not the only one in this series that has got secrets in his life on lockdown where the other Oxford men have no idea what's going on. We're looking at you, Lincoln. We're looking at you. Yeah, Um, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Penelope, um, like I said, real bodied, funny about, you know, her perception into the world. She knows that she's the girl next door and that guys look at her and quickly put her in the friend zone. She is a total sweetheart, though, and she is, like, one of my book besties because she's probably, like, if I were written as a heroine, it would probably be her because of, like, the sheer nature of her diehard love of baseball. Yeah. (laughs) We get some cute interactions between her, her and her sister and her and her sister and her mom, and she is absolutely the girl you want to be best friends with, that you want to call and laugh with, um... So this book is written in 2015. Her mom has just found Facebook at this time and keeps <laughs> posting naked pictures of her and her sister from when they were little on the Facebook. And her mom refers to them not as her Facebook friends, but as her fans. <laughs> and Pen- Penelope is just like, Mom, Mom, please stop. <laughs> it's hysterical. I love their interactions so much. Um, So... Penelope has also just arrived in New York. Their meet cute is actually at a baseball game, a Yankees game. Um, yes. They 
like he she catches Cole's eye because she is actually more invested in the baseball game than like any other person he's ever seen in his life. Right. They're in and- a, they're like in a journalism suite, you know, where there is food and there is drink and people are milling around and networking. But she is solely focused on that game. And Cole takes note that she's actually paying attention and writing things down. But he doesn't know who she is until his boss shows up. Yeah. And introduces them and says, I'll see you at the interview tomorrow. (laughs) This book is so good. Like there's so many funny interactions because like very quickly after they meet, like Cole is off balance. Like Cole is really off balance through a lot of this book. Like he's doing things that are out of character and you can tell, like you don't have to read the other books in the stiletto series before this one. To know like his persona because you get like cues from his interactions with Alex Cassidy the boss you get cues from his interactions with his co-workers and like what kind of person he is and like you can just see like in a lot of those interactions like he is off his game he is not doing the things that are cold like at all no, and people are noticing there's a really <laughs> great scene where he goes to flirt with the receptionist to find out if Penelope's interview is over or not and how it went. And, and then he realizes she's still in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he interrupts it. Like he walks in on her job interview. Yeah. Oh my God. It was um it was so funny. And I think Penelope is so funny and quirky as a character. I also thought it was great. She eats and food is her love language like her sister often has to remind her that hot dogs are not the only food you can eat that you must get nutrients from other things and there's a scene where she's mowing down on dorito (laughs) yeah she's so funny and then like she's got these little game rituals where she's got to get like a hot dog at the game and she's got to eat the hot dog while she's there and if it's a new team she hasn't been to before she's got to get a hat but like she goes to the mets game and she won't get the hat for herself So there's like, she's got all these cute little quirky things and I love it because it is like you get so many um, sports romances where you get like the player's perspective, but like they capture with Penelope the true fandom of a sports fanatic. And it's so like the fact that it's not Cole and it's her just makes it like so adorable. Yeah. Well, and there's some really sweet interactions with her and, like, baseball. Like, she goes in search of games, and she isn't just doing it for a job. It's a love of the team. It's a love of the sport, even though she's an implant from Chicago to New York, you know. Um, And there's also a really great interaction between um, Penelope and Bobby because she happens upon – Bobby and Cole at a baseball game and um, that's when she meets and learns about Bobby and Cole's relationship and it was just so sweet because she was as ex- Bobby was as ecstatic about baseball as she was and it just created you just love her that much more and I think for Cole too he loved her that much more in those moments. Yeah, and that was really pivotal, too, for her and Cole's relationship shift because there was attraction. They were starting to have, like, a friends with benefits situation, but that really pivoted it into something more. Like, Cole realized that it didn't have to just be casual, that he could start letting her in because she didn't run for the hills um, about his commitment. She she wound up loving Bobby, too. There's a great, a great quote that Cole says that I just loved in this book. And it was, everyone acts like the moment you realize you're in love is this big gotcha moment. But they're actually a moment after that. The one where you realize you could lose that person you love. And I was like, that explains this book. Like, he slowly realizes that it's more than just that one moment when he's instantly attracted to her. It's that he would miss all these small little things between the two of them yeah he's precious he's still kind of a butthead but um um such a butthead but he does buy her onion rings when she can't go to lunch with the guys and that made me love him (laughs) a little bit more i was a little more forgiving um that was so cute the fact that like 
he knew that she wanted onion rings like <laughs> well and he also calls her out you know he says to her i think you pretended you didn't want to be wooed because no one's made the effort and deep down you're terrified that nobody ever will and it's true that you know what true. as a woman we do all want to be wooed we want to be wooed and that was so relatable but there is a fear of rejection or a fear that that guy is never going to show up so sometimes you just act like you don't i don't want this even though I kind of deep down inside, I do want the flowers or I do want the chocolate. Um, I do want the date night. You say you don't want it because you fear it's never going to happen. And because of what happened to her, like as you learn why she came to New York and the situation, or the circumstances around that move, she's been burned like very badly by someone who she was in love with. And the like that entire situation is just absolutely abhorrent. Like you really feel for her and you can definitely, I think, I think she's very relatable in so many ways. Oh yeah. So I think one of the greatest interactions in this whole book is the kiss poll that coworker Lincoln, who is the office flirt and sweet tooth. Like he eats the, you know, mocha frappe with, double sugars and extra whipped cream. Um, if it's a baked good, he's eating it. <laughs> but yeah, he's, and he's got a little puppy and yeah, he's he's yeah, he's, he's very he is frat boy puppy energy. He is a golden retriever of men. Um but he does this kiss poll about how do you want the hands on your face or around you? Like where do your hands belong? What kind of kiss is sexier? And he goes into kiss Penelope and he does. And Cole about loses his brain. Yeah, he it's hysterical. Like he does not understand that Lincoln is just messing with him. And Lincoln get like Lincoln gets his number. Like Lincoln is like, yeah, I'm going to take her out on a date. And <laughs> yeah. He goads Cole into making his move. It's really hysterical <laughs> and this whole series it is a spinoff and so we do see previous characters from the stiletto series that come over because they're so basically the stilettos is like the vogue magazine the l magazine and the oxford magazine is like men's health or gq-esque type magazine um and so we do see some other characters in and then there is a total of five books I think four or five books in the Oxford series and they're all really great, but I love the f fun banter of this uh, magazine. Like as coworkers, I think this works really well together. Um, and this is the kind of fun banter I want to see in a coworker romance. It is. And they're, they become like very much a found family. And some of the things I love about the series is that like, even as care, like, I think about Elle in particular, because even as like she becomes very close with the friend group, like she's still the quiet reserved friend. Like you still, the, it's very, very relatable to like a real world girl gang um, and their interactions. And yeah, especially in the way they just like adopt Penelope into their fold. It's very much a more, more the merrier oh, kind of situation. For sure. There's an awkward dinner party where they're working really hard to <laughs> pit Cole against Lincoln for to vie for Penelope's attention. Hilarious. Um, I just, I think this book is great. And if you are looking for that coworker chemistry, that flirty banter, this is an absolute must read. I agree. Um, I think it's very similar. If you liked uh, Vikeland's The Invitation, I think it has those same kind of vibes, except they're not boss employee. They're just coworkers. They, their equivalents um but it works really well yeah but it's not as like i wouldn't say it's more definitely contemporary it's not there are funny situations but i wouldn't classify it a rom-com no i wouldn't say it's a rom-com but there there are funny funny situations um okay do you think you have a book you think we should review for a quick shot of romance send us an email to the bees at bookcaseandcoffee.com and we will add it to our tbrs Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me for this quick shot of romance it was so fun until next time everyone happy reading find us on instagram at buzzing about romance 
or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 